I'm Dennis Laguerre. And I'm Daryl Liggins. And we're here getting down to the brass tacks and hard packs of Gator Y operations with Modern Flows. Today we're putting to the test gated Y operations with modern flows. Modern flows typically are 150 GPM or more, which is typically adopted by the American Fire Service. Unfortunately, a lot of fire departments have kept their legacy hose layouts uh, with gated Y operations. In the past, we saw that that wasn't usually an issue, but today it can cause some real hydraulic complications. Higher flows are required for our modern fire conditions. We have larger homes, synthetic materials, and lightweight building construction. There's many different nozzle selections in the American Fire Service. So we wanted to make this as realistic as possible. So we essentially chose right around the 150 GPM flow, the minimum standard, and we did it with a couple different nozzles. We did a 7 8 inch tip at 50 PSI, which is 160 gallons a minute. We did a 150 at 75 combination nozzle, which is a very popular nozzle. And we also know that some agencies remain in automatic nozzles, so we pumped for that 150 flow. We had 200 feet of two and a half, the gated Y, then 100 feet of inch and three quarter line each. The four scenarios here we're looking at are this. You deploy your Y operation and the first line starts flowing. You pump for that first line. An officer comes up and decides to deploy a second line backup line, secondary line, it doesn't matter. When he opens the nozzle, it's gonna drop pump pressure. The third scenario is you're gonna have to increase pump discharge pressure to get both lines to operate correctly. Once that has occurred, both lines are obviously not gonna operate simultaneously on the fire ground at all times. Sometimes one nozzle will be shut while the other nozzle is open, but you still have the two line pump discharge pressure. What happens to the other line? Those are the four conditions that occur with all Y operations when two outlets are used. So let's take a look at those three nozzles and we're gonna start with the seven eights. With one line flowing and the proper pump discharge pressure, we achieved 160 GPM at 50 PSI. Then we had the other outlet taken. We achieved a flow of 255 GPM at 32 PSI per nozzle. If you split that flow, you only get 125 GPM each. This is well below the 150 minimum. Increasing the pump discharge pressure, we attained 320 GPM at 50 PSI. Here we see 160 GPM coming out of each nozzle. Note that the streams have picked back up and there's quality and reach. 32 PSI is really too little for a smoothbore nozzle to have an effective fire stream. Now, one nozzle shuts down. With one nozzle shut down and the governor appropriately set, we ended up with 199 GPM at approximately 78 PSI with one 7 8 inch smoothbore. This represents a nozzle reaction force of around 92 pounds. This is unmanageable for a single firefighter on the fire ground. Here you see in the second setup with Modern Flows, we've moved to a combination nozzle. These nozzles are 150 at 75 PSI. We attained the proper pump discharge pressure for one line in service. You can see 150 GPM at 75 PSI. Next, we use the other outlet without adjusting pump discharge pressure. The GPM was 248 gallons a minute at roughly 50 PSI in each nozzle. This split, again, represents only 125 per line, which is too little for the modern fire environment based on a 150 minimum target flow. We then increase pump discharge pressure to 300 GPM at 75 in each nozzle. You'll see that the stream picked up here a bit and looks better. You probably would not notice this on the fire ground in smoky conditions. Now we've shut down one nozzle. GPM picked up in one line to 179 at around 110 PSI. That resulted in 94 pounds nozzle reaction in the single line with the two line pump discharge pressure. This again is unmanageable for a single firefighter on the fire ground. Here in the final example, we're using automatic nozzles. We're gonna pump for a flow of 150 GPM as a target flow. An automatic nozzle is gonna be unique in that in the video, you'll see that the reach is maintained. What we really should be paying attention to here is volume. In scenario one, we have one line deployed and we pumped till we got 150 GPM. Second, the other outlet is opened and the second nozzle is flowed. We get 210 GPM at 80 PSI and the split is 105 each at the single line pump discharge pressure. Note that the automatic nozzle maintained the reach, but the gallonage loss was much more severe. The firefighter on the fire ground not only would have no visual cue this occurred, 
probably would not notice inside the buildings. Finally, if the engineer was informed that the second outlet was used, he would increase pump discharge pressure to again have a combined flow of 300 GPM. The split would be 150. You see that here on the flow meter. Now, when one nozzle is shut down, this created a condition where the other nozzle was flowing 216 GPM, again at that base pressure of around 90 because it's an automatic nozzle, but it resulted in the highest nozzle reaction of the day, which is around 103 pounds. One advantage of an automatic nozzle here is you could gate this down to help reduce nozzle reaction. But would you know that it was coming and would you maintain control of the nozzle or would you lose the nozzle on the fire ground? In all three scenarios, if you didn't adjust the pump pressure up, the second line robbed significant amounts of water from the first line. Once you adjusted the pump pressure up, when you shut down one line, it significantly overpressured the other line. These are significant issues on the fire ground using this Y setup with these modern flows. So as you can see, with modern flows, gated Y operations could have some serious implications. I can't tell you what the implications of your specific department is. To find out, you need to test your equipment with your nozzles and find out if it's a problem for you. Some departments have found it a problem and eliminated the use of the gated Ys altogether. The hydraulic implications that we found today is you could have two lines with insufficient reach and insufficient flows where you're not meeting your target flow. Or you could have one line with so much pressure that it leaves it unmanageable to the firefighter. I wanna stress that these are problems that a pressure governor or a pressure relief valve will not solve because that's always set for the highest pressure that you can have. These are the brass tacks and hard facts of modern flows and gated Y operations.